Testing, testing. Hi, my name is Christopher Treach, ukulele builder and instrumentalist. Today's uh, question is how to record your ukulele. Um, and it's a tough question to answer because there, there's a lot involved in recording music. And um, not, it's not only gear, but a lot of experience as well. So uh, when I recorded my album beginning today, I went to a studio and got, um, used professional, you know, a professional sound engineer who had expensive microphones, and other equipment like um, audio interfaces and just his uh, software program where he's recording and editing the uh, sound um, is an expensive program. So um, I do record my own, I self record some of my own music as well. And uh, I've done a few projects that way. So I'll just tell you a little bit about some of the decisions that I made and some of the gear that I used. And hopefully that helps you out too if you are recording your ukulele yourself. Cool. So there's two ways to record your sound. Your sound's an analog uh, thing, right? And you're trying to get it into a digital format on your computer that you can edit and play around with. So you can use a microphone or you can use the pickup in your ukulele, right? So if you plug in your ukulele, then the pickup that it's basically a microphone, you take uh, the other end of the plug and plug it into your computer. Um, the same thing with the microphone, but the problem is that uh, we use these cables when we uh, plug in our microphone or ukulele, right? This is a quarter inch cable. This is how I plug in my ukulele, okay? And then this is an XLR cable. And if you haven't seen one of these before, it's a three prong, looks like this. And that's how you plug in a microphone. And I don't know about you, but my computer doesn't have those, uh, you know, inputs, right? It's my, you know, my computer is this big. It doesn't have space for a quarter inch or a, or an XLR in it. So what people use is an audio interface and that's an external sound card basically that you has those inputs. So you can get, you know, maybe four inputs. You could plug in the quarter inch or the XLR or both into different inputs. And then sometimes you get some EQ adjustments and uh, maybe a gain, you know, for each channel or for the entire thing. Um, that's cool, but it, it adds, every piece that you add makes it a little bit harder and there's a learning curve for each piece. So I go without that and um, I use USB mics. Now uh, XLR cables and quarter inch cables are good at uh, keeping the sound clean and not distorting the sound. And if you kind of change to other lower quality cables, then your sound's gonna drop in quality too. But technology with USBs has really come up in the last few years. And um, I think that the sound that I'm getting at least, and I've read a lot of reviews online, that USB mics are, are uh, doing a, a good job. So let me show you the two mics that I have and that I use and uh, give you some ideas. So this is a CO1 Pro. This is a Samson mic. Uh, the U stands for USB. Um, they also make a non-USB XLR version. And um, this is what it looks like. This is it. And I, this kind of makes me think of like a passive pickup on ukulele. There's not any, really any adjustments. You plug it in. It's got some kind of, uh, I'm not sure what that cable attachment is there, but the other end is a USB and you plug it into the computer and I could plug my headphones in here or I could plug them into the computer either way. And um, that's about it, right? And uh, the new mic that I got is a Shure, it's an MV88. And you see a lot of uh, social media people using this cause it's got a, uh, it comes with a little tripod and a little phone holder. And this mic is cool cause it actually, you can plug it into your phone too. But this reminds me of, this is it. It's a lot smaller, a little bit more portable, easy to carry around. Um, this reminds me of an active pickup on the ukulele because um, it has a lot of adjustments in the microphone itself. So once you plug it into your phone or your computer, you can, um, adjust the gain of the mic. You can have a limiter, a compressor. You're gonna adjust the cardioid pattern. And what I really like too is that it's a stereo mic. So I have a right side and a left side. And actually the input that comes up on GarageBand, cause I use a Mac, um, that's my, my recording software. I actually get two bars. So I have a right uh, input and a left input. And um, you gotta be careful though, because one time I had the mic tilted off to the right. So the left input was receiving more uh, sound. So my left bar was like this and my right bar was like that. So I had to re-record it to get it more even. Um, but it really fills out the sound, especially when you're listening with headphones in. Um, it sounds a lot bigger rather than a mono sound, um, which the Samsung gives me. So Samsung's nice. It was $80, not too expensive. This one runs more like $250, um, but definitely worth the, uh, the upgrade for me. 
The Samson, a lot of mics, you may have to get a mic stand that works like this, right? It's a, a pretty, fairly large, maybe half inch. Uh, you screw it on, whatever, and then you gotta work with finagling your mic stand. Um, I like the uh, Shure that I have because it's got a, a uh, eighth inch um, screw, which is what camera tripods use. So I have a camera tripod, I can set it up. I set my phone up on one tripod, I could set the, the mic up on the other tripod, but I usually don't even use it when I'm doing videos because my, my phone has a pretty good uh, um, camera and audio already, but uh, I could do that if I like. So how you set up the mic and how you set up the room is important as well to get a good sound. So once you figure out and you do research on what mic you're going to get and maybe the audio interface and what software program that you can get and you have your instrument all set up to play and set up the right way for recording because uh, sometimes you could set it up to some adjustments to make it better for recording rather than performing or just playing acoustically. You set up your mic, right? And how I set up my mic is if I'm playing, I'll grab my instrument here. Instead of having it right in front of me, I have it a little bit off over here, kind of uh, towards the fingerboard, and then remember to turn it back towards the sound hole too. Because again, like I was just saying, if you keep, if you just move it parallel, um, then your left side will have more signal than your right side. So you turn it back, so that stereo sound is good, and um, that's how you set it up. And when I recorded professionally, I had one mic here, and then I had a ribbon mic down here, and then I also plugged in with the direct input. So I had three different channels and uh, we mixed those sounds together. Some, some we increase or decrease depending on what we wanted. They each give a little bit different color tone to your sound. So uh, the more inputs you can get, the more options that you have. But when I self record, I usually just use that one microphone because it's a good quality mic and um, I'm not doing anything, you know, like recording an album myself. It's a little more like demo takes, right? Um, and then the last thing that's really important is how to set up your room. So uh, I've played around in different places in my house and in the rooms as well to see what sounds the best. And I've done a little bit of reading. And um, if something like this, where there's a ton of stuff, all hard surfaces that reflect sound is not the best. You want to have uh, like a blank wall behind you, either uh, the corner of the room or, or wall. I usually use the wall in one of my rooms and uh, there's a closet there. So over the doors, I drape a, a blanket, a thick blanket, and I put a couple pillows. And, and then I get, I back myself up against the wall pretty much. That way behind me is treated, like acoustic treatment. You know, you can get actual, you know, acoustic treatment foam, but why not use some blankets and pillows? I got them, right? Um, I sit on the floor and I use a yoga mat because every chair that I have squeaks one way or another. And I, I always end up moving a little bit and getting that squeak right when I don't want it. So I just sit on the floor um, I have the floor padded with a mat, pillows, and blanket behind me. And you want to be against the wall, that way your sound goes out and uh, you get a little bit of almost like room echo or room reverb uh, naturally, right? Um, some people will throw treatment up in the corners of their room and, uh, you know, each corner of the room. And then above there'll be kind of like these triangular pyramid shaped uh, um, acoustic treatment that, you know, keeps the echoes kind of bouncing in a certain direction and a whole bunch of crazy stuff like that. But um, if you're recording yourself, you can experiment a little bit, but I would say, you know, back yourself towards a wall or a corner of the room and a little bit of uh, sound dampening things behind you and to your sides, um, right? And you wouldn't need anything behind the microphone. Um, I hope these tips were a little helpful um, and a little bit about my microphones, what I use. If you have any questions, please do comment them below. I'd love to, uh, make these videos more specific to what you're looking for or what information that you need. Um, make sure you like the video, subscribe to my YouTube page. And if you really like the content, go join my Patreon. It means a lot to me. And uh, you have access to exclusive ukulele content there. Hey, just for you. All right? Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time.